Uh, whenever you're rendering in cycles, there are a couple of things that you can do if you have a horrible ass laptop like I do, or um, you just generally want an animation to render faster. And uh, the three things that I like doing the most are um, samples, uh, um, tiling, and bounces. Okay, so again, sample, tiling, bounces. Uh, we'll go over here, right, and uh, text. Ooh. So sampling, okay. So sampling, right? Whenever you want your renders to look really, really good, you put this to some astronomically high number, you know, like 12,000, right? Um, but you'll eventually find that it will go from looking really, really good, right? Really good, and then it'll just sort of um, stop looking better because the amount of samples that you're providing to it can't really make it look any good because the amount of math that is being done has already been done so many times that there's no there's no perceptible change to the human eye okay so whenever you're rendering an animation um, you can even get away with it being even lower than you can on like a static one because each frame itself um, isn't really the focus of an animation if that makes sense right I mean you want every frame to look good but at the same time you can get away with not making it as good and so you can turn these down to some sort of sample that looks good uh, in order to find a sample that looks good, um, you can guess. I mean, 150 is usually a good number, 200 depending on what you're making, um, but uh, we'll get to that a little, little bit later. So whenever you're sampling something like this, I usually try to go about 150 for the samples, um, as, and that's pretty much as high, as high as I like to go. So there's our sampling. So if I was going to render our scene here, uh, I would use probably 100 samples there, maybe 125, uh, because again, uh, the when you have lower samples, the more you increase them, the better it's going to look. So if you start with 10 samples, it's going to look like garbage, and 20 samples will probably look twice as better, and then 50 samples may or may not be double that, so you'll just want to sort of play with that number and get that to where you need it to be. Um, but again, like I said, uh, lower is better in terms of making a fast render. Um, the next thing that really changes how something um, renders is the light paths. So we have our sampling, and now we deal with light paths. Right. Path. Path. Okay. Um, so with light paths, okay, uh, you have these presets: direct light, full global illumination, limited global illumination. Okay. Uh, you can sort of see that if we are on our integrator presets, it sort of just is whatever. But if we go to direct light, you can see that these numbers just changed a whole lot. They used to be 128, now they're 0, 1, and 2. Basically what this is doing is saying, okay, whenever light hits an object, so light comes in and hits this object, what does the light do? Well, um, in the real world, light bounces off of things. That's how we see color. The things that are blue reflect blue light. That's how you are able to see the color blue. So what this does is says, OK, based on these materials, these are the bounces that I want to give it. Uh, we're going to have a maximum of 8, a minimum of 8. So we're always going to get 8 bounces off of things. Okay, And this is going to calculate pretty damn fast because there are very low values here. Okay, if you look at limited global illumination, okay, we've added a lot more values here, and we've also added some minimum values here. So light is more dynamic in this setting because it can do minimum bounces, so it bounces three times, and then that's as far as that gets versus a maximum of eight. So, um, and then the glossy diffuse and transmission are higher up there as well, so that we get a better looking thing. You can also see that no caustics is checked. Caustics are the reflections of light reflecting off of surfaces. Okay, uh, we don't have to worry about that. Just know that if this is checked, it will render much faster. If it is not checked, it your render will look better if you're using glass or glossy materials, specifically glass. Um, and then full global illumination, you can say everything got turned off. We have a huge amount of bounces everywhere. Our, our colors are 128. So that, I mean, you're looking at a massive amount of calculation to be able to get this calculation done. But it will look significantly better uh, depending on how complex your scene is. Um, for this animation, uh, you will s um, there are a lot of settings that you could use. Um, full gloom and global illumination makes a whole lot of sense here. But with full global illumination, I had one of these frames at 800 by 600 take 40 minutes to render. Yeah, that's really painful. So 40 minutes, it would take like 30, 
it would take like a week and a half for this thing to get done rendering, okay? And that's entirely too long that I don't want to wait. So I ended up moving it down to direct light, and direct light uh, worked a little bit better, but I still, it was still wasn't as fast as I thought needed it to be. With um, all of my um, threads enabled, so I have a four core processor here, I think it took five minutes. And I was still like, well, that's still kind of long, at least for, for my taste. So I played with these values and got them down even lower. Um, but I, I think I ended up doing six, six and three, and then leaving everything else there. So the maximum bounces that it will do is six, and that got it down to like three and a half minutes per frame. And that worked out a lot better. So I could sort of render that overnight for a 300 frame um, animation. And it would still look pretty decent, as you can see from the um, animation that I did prior. Um, the big thing with these bounces is that when you're using a gl glass material like we have here, um, y you will sacrifice some quality in how the light reacts with it. So just be aware of that. But again, going from 40 minutes per frame to three and a half minutes per frame, I definitely found that to be worth it. And again, um, most people are not going to think about this. They're just going to look at an animation or something like that and just say, oh, that's really nice. You know, Most people don't know the, the reasoning or process behind there. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, and then the, the third piece of it, and arguably the most important uh, for me, is um, tiles. Okay. Tiles um, vary differently. OK, so we, we talked about sampling, right? We talked about light pass. Now we're talking about um, under this performance tab, the tiles. If you are using a processor, so a Intel processor, an AMD processor, not a graphics card, you're using a laptop, your graphics card is garbage, your graphics card doesn't support cycles, whatever, um, your tiles need to be like 16 by 16 as small as you can get them ish because uh, it will render significantly faster um, so again just be aware of that uh, with your tiles if you're using a CPU make sure that your tiles are set to something that's very very small this will allow you to render things significantly faster if you're using a GPU this number needs to be basically as high as you could do I mean you could do a progressive refine which does the entire image uh, but um, yeah I actually haven't tested that but just be aware that um, yeah when you're using a CPU like I am you want probably 16 by 16 to be your tiles. You will find that your renders will go much, 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 much faster. Um, these things, uh, the, the spatial splits and the cache BVH, um, you can change that. You can click those, and they will supposedly speed up the render, but I haven't found anything that really makes it that much faster. I mean, there's there's only so much you can do. Um, the sampling with light pass on the tiles, however, you can really get a very, very, very quick and dirty render out very, very fast by setting the sampling low, uh, making your light paths bounce not as much, and then setting your tiles to be significantly lower than the defaults are. Um, the only other thing I will say is uh, whenever I have to use my um, computer, I usually make this fixed and I'll make it either one or two um, because I like to do other things on my computer other than render stuff out. You know, like if I'm using all four um, CPU threads, uh, it makes it very difficult to like browse the internet or I do work or whatever. And so I'll put this down to like one or two and just sort of let the system run. Because again, in terms of rendering, time is on your side. Your computer can always be working. Whenever I do an animation, I usually try to get it set up in the day and then let uh, go to bed, uh, start it pretty much whenever I get home from work and just let it go forever till it's done. Um, if you can leave your computer on, I would do that. Even if you're using just a, a bargain basement uh, Pentium 4, like it's just going to overheat and kill you. Um, it's still okay to let that thing run because it's time, right? It's time. It's it will go forever and ever and ever, so you can go do other things and then come back and say, oh, okay, so I have this, I now have this animation that I can put on YouTube or show my friends or um, have my dog laugh at, whatever. So again, um, whenever you're rendering stuff out, just know that time is on your side with that. Just let the computer do what it does and it'll get done eventually. Um, you could use a render farm or whatever like that, but I try to stay, I, I tend to stay away from them just because I don't know a whole lot about them and I don't really like reading user license agreements or anything like that. So I figure, you know what, if I can optimize my, my computer to be good enough, then that's what I'm going to do and just leave it at that. Okay, so there's basically your uh, 
crash course in uh, CPU rendering garbage animations. Um, make sure your sampling's pretty damn low. Make sure your light paths are uh, also lower than expected, and that your uh, tiles are very very small. All right.